Today we're going to be going over Mighty Uko, one of my champions that I actually have two of and I really enjoy using. I did the fusion and then I summoned Uko from a shard a while ago. I do use both of them. For a while I was actually using this particular Uko for Hydra, so I have them built a little bit differently than I do this Uko that I use a lot more nowadays. But we're going to go over the skills, my builds, for if you want to use a PvP Uko versus a PvE slash Hydra Uko. His A1 is an AoE, and it has a 75% chance of placing the big version of decrease attack. And then his A2 is going to attack twice with a 100% chance on each hit to remove two random buffs from the target. After he does remove all buffs, if there are no more buffs, then he's going to place block buffs and decrease attack. Now his A3 is an AoE revival for your entire team with some HP, and he also places block damage on them. Even if nobody is revived, he is still going to place increased speed on all allies for two turns, and then his passive, which is probably the most annoying thing to have to deal with, and one of the reasons why, like if I'm doing plat arena, I try to avoid Uko because he just has so much RNG built in with his passive. 50% chance to steal one random buff from a random enemy each time a buff is placed on the team. Pause. Pause. Because anytime you go into a fight and you're starting out a fight with stone skin, just walking into the fight with stone skin, Uko will have a 50% chance. I don't know if that books up even, or not books up. I don't know if that goes up with masteries. Take your stone skin is annoying. It can ruin a lot of things. Any stolen buffs will become protected. They become protected. That's pretty obvious. You can't remove them after that. Then his aura provides a 20% boost to speed in all battles. So because he, he does two AOE moves, he is an excellent candidate for CC gear. What does CC mean? Crowd control. I actually learned about pairing stun and frostbite or provoke and frostbite to use them in, in PvP or like some areas of PvE from Gavin. I was having a discussion doing a gear tier list for the year 2024, and he told me that his Uko was built in frostbite and stun or provoke and frostbite, and so is his UDK. So I was like, you know what? I need to hop on that. So because all of his moves are AoEs, he has an 18% chance, but it's 23 with masteries with fearsome presence to place a stun for one turn. If you didn't know this, stun not only prevents a champion from taking a turn, but it also prevents the cooldowns from, well, cooling down. If you have an active skill that is on cooldown, for example, let's say it's at three turns and you get stunned and your turn passes, but you're still stunned, your active cooldown does not go from three to two, it stays at three because of the stun. Frostbite's really cool because you're gonna have a chance to play uh, to block freeze debuff, so for example, going against Tormund, and then you have a 10% chance to place a freeze debuff on an attacker. It's like a buffed up version of Frost. This, in conjunction with each other, both of these sets are gonna be getting a boost, a 5% boost from the Fear Fearsome Presence Mastery, and this creates a uh, cataclysmic event for anybody going up against you. Oftentimes, I would go into like a classic arena fight with both of these Ukos. This one has a 30-35% chance to place Provoke, so it's a higher chance to place a crowd control. Provoke makes it so that the person attacking you can't do anything except attack the Provoker and only use their A1. Now for the Blessing, I did go for Polymorph. Keep in mind that this is a low Blessing. There might be better options out there, but this is what I'm going with. If I receive a higher blessing, all of my stats go up and we have a chance, 20% chance. Look at this, 20% chance of placing irresistible, meaning you don't need accuracy, sheep. Other than that, you are going to need, it says right here, require accuracy to place sheep. So naturally, you're already going to be building Uko with high accuracy because you want to place the block buffs and the buff strips. Something a little bit separate when it comes to the gear sets in and of itself is the stun set, the frostbite, and the provoke do not need accuracy. The sets in and of themselves do not require accuracy, it's just a flat 18, 30%, 10% chance to place whatever debuff. The other thing is I would also consider if I wanted to redo this Uko and maybe kit him out for Hydra again, I'd consider a cursed set. Whenever you place Hex on the Hydra heads, you're not only increasing damage because damage is going to be spread throughout the entire opposite team, 
but you're also going to be able to control whether or not you hit the head of mischief the head of mischief steals buffs and you can't target it. i think it's like an 85 percent chance to have your attacks redirected because he does aoe's you don't have to worry about single target you're just going to be placing hex all over the place so that's another option if you don't have provoke or you don't want to use provoke and you prefer to use hex for hydra that is an option for you thank you for 968 subs almost at a thousand and pretty soon here when i do hit a thousand i'm gonna try and get into the raid shadow legends official content creator program so first we have my pvp uko these are the pieces of gear that i have on them in case you are wondering these are not the best pieces of gear that i have just because i don't really farm stun or frostbite but this is what i currently had lying around and so that's what I went with. This is my second Uko, Provoke Set Uko. Room for improvement, especially with Glyphs and Ascension. All right, so what I was going for here was some survivability. So I focused a little bit. I probably put this as a second priority, HP and defense. But the most important things here to prioritize are his speed and his accuracy. His speed is pretty good his accuracy is actually a little low i would prefer to have him especially if i'm using him in pvp well if we're being honest a lot higher because 340 is not going to cut it especially if i'm going to be using him in plat arena but i don't think i see too many mighty ukos nowadays in plat arena so maybe you'd be okay with getting away with lower accuracy if you're looking to stay in like gold four or gold five but regardless, I would still try to get more accuracy on him. I feel like I would be okay with him being at 400 accuracy plus. Maybe drop the speed a little. When it comes to my support champions, I try to go 240 plus. It's the same thing here. But for Hydra, I put in a little more tankiness. So a lot more HP. About the same defense. 200 speed almost. So 192 speed is a little slow. I might have to redo them. This build is outdated. 400 accuracy is pretty good for Hydra. Decent. So again, you're looking for speed and accuracy and some survivability when it comes to Uko. Okay, now let's go over the masteries for both of my Ukos. And before we do that, I want you to know that, yes, I do think that Uko is worth booking out. I do think he's worth maxing out and investing in. I would say no more than two Ukos. I think if you get a third Uko, because for some reason I feel like the fusion champions are so heavily weighted in terms of the, like the summoning pool, I feel like I, I summon more fusion champions than I do other types of champions. But anyway, he's worth it. He's worth investing in. Here are the masteries. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries. We're taking the defense tree for some extra res, extra healing to... Now, for improved parry... We're taking 8% less damage when hit with crits. Going up against people in PvP, a lot of these guys naturally just have 100% crit and more. So I felt like that was better to take over Blast Proof, which decreases damage received by AoE attacks only by 5%. But there's nothing wrong with taking either or. I also took Resurgent to have a chance to remove one random debuff, damage mitigation by way of delayed death, and we're taking both counterattack masteries right here and this is important especially if you're going to use a stun provoke frostbite or cursed uko you want a chance to increase the probability of placing stuns freezes or provokes or sheep actually this this helps with sheep too so if you're running polymorph this also helps taking accuracy and we're taking increased accuracy here some more accuracy here because he does place a lot of debuffs, we want to make sure that he's taking as many turns as possible, so you do want to take this as well. Cycle of Magic is a good choice. Lore of Steel for extra stats, and then if everybody's dead, you want him to go faster. You could also take Cycle of Revenge. I don't think that's a bad option to increase turn meter. Uh, have a 50% chance of increasing turn meter whenever an ally is hit with a crit. You could also take Sniper. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you could take Master Hexer to extend the debuffs extend uh, specifically the decrease attack and the block buffs it's not going to increase the cc buffs debuffs i mean on my hydra uko again i don't really use him anymore and this is outdated don't blindly cop don't blindly copy masteries but this is what we're going with we went with defense aoe decrease follow down the same path except we took leech 
I don't think you should take Harvest to spare, especially going up against Hydra, because you can't place any of these debuffs. I think this was my original Uko that I had before I summoned my other one, and I was trying to use this one in uh, PvP a while back, but it's outdated. Deterrence is okay, again, Cycle of Magic is okay. You want counterattack, I might even just go double counterattack for an increased chance to place said crowd control debuffs, and then of course we're taking Fearsome Presence. Accuracy, for some reason I took Exalt and Death, maybe to increase survivability with this Uko, but i will probably go with this one because oftentimes when you're trying to build an arena team using Uko, you want him to go first, and so a 20 point boost to accuracy will help out quite a bit. And pretty much the same thing here, except we took Sniper. I probably would take Cycle of Magic over Harvest Despair. Nothing wrong with taking Evil Eye as well. So I think we belabored the point talking about both of my Ukos. Let's go ahead and take them into Arena. Okay, so here is one team that I want to try and go up against. We have Arbiter, so I'm assuming they're going to go fast. But we also have Leo, Nishak. He's probably going to be in Stone Skin. I don't actually go up against Pinthroy too much, if ever. Well, let's go ahead and try this. We have Sun Wukong in the lead. We have Torment to counter the um, Arbiter. And we have Uko. Let's see if he is able to steal some buffs. And then we have Warlord to decrease their their um, cooldowns. But let's let's see it. So we got the freeze off. Let's go ahead and put their skills on cooldown. And then we're going to try and remove buffs as well as place block debuffs. So here we have some buffs. If they get removed, if all of them get removed, then we place the two extra debuffs. But if they don't, then we don't place the other things. Except um, here we actually weak hit, negative affinity. But we place the block buffs here as well as the decrease attack. You guys saw that Uko actually counterattacked because of one of the masteries involved. And I think we can go ahead and just hit Leo and call it a day there. A stone skin Uko would also be pretty good. Revenge amulets to get another 5% chance to counterattack when hit. The more counterattacks you can pop off with him, the better. We're going to change it up here. We're going to go into this fight with Rhonda this time. Okay, so we're going to place their skills on cooldown. And Rhonda does her thing. Rhonda's actually pretty underrated, I think, when it comes to a damage dealer. Now, this Rhonda isn't exactly the best Rhonda out there. I know someone who has uh, better uh, better stats for their Rhonda. But, um, you know, I tried, I tried to do what I could with the Savage that I had available. That I was willing to spare, I should say. Because I wasn't going to take... Um, I wasn't going to take my, my Savage gear off other champions. But let's go ahead and try to put an end to this fight here. Push back Pytheon. And Uko is right there. Oh, that's right. Tormund is in stun set also. That's why I paired them together. They do pretty well together. Both of them in stun. We have a little bit of a meme team here. We're going into this fight with two Ukos and two Wukongs. So let's see what we can what we can manage here. We stole the increased attack. I was hoping we could steal the counter attacks, but that didn't uh, happen. But that's okay. We removed their buffs. And we also... Oh, Polymorph? No, Polymorph? Okay. And we're also able to place a stun on Valkyrie here. No buff removal there. That's fine. Oh, we got provoked. We got provoked, both of them. All right. Of course. And this one is the faster one, so this one is my accuracy, Wukong. So we stole some, but we lost the 50-50 check. And let's go ahead and try to do this. Do some more damage. Man, that's a that's a pretty accurate um, UDK. And there it is. So now we're we're relying just on. I should have actually started out sheeping him. And there we go. Yeah, but I'd be interested to to um, hear what kind of teams you guys are running with Uko. I personally don't really use him uh, other than for fun in arena anymore uh, just because i just have i have better teams nowadays okay so in the middle of me recording i noticed that gold or that that live arena went live during my my editing and let's go ahead and try to just uh get get a fight in so i can show you guys uh stun set frostbite uko we're gonna start out with yumiko 
Honestly, this looks pretty messed up. I, I know this guy smacks pretty hard, uh, so we might just have to get rid of him. But it it's hard for me to want to keep Rhodos and Sivy in, but we'll just take care of the Mythic because it, it just is what it is. Maybe we'll get lucky. I don't know. It's going to be a tough one to take down, for sure. Kind of stuck between a, a rock and a hard spot there. I legitimately thought that because his name was Gift, he was probably just going to give me this fight, but but I guess not. Alright, and so his gift to us is just taking up our time, it seems like. Yeah, this is going to be one of those. Okay. Although this is pretty cool to see, Uko just stealing all these buffs, it's all protected too. N normally I'd like to play along with this game, but I, I'm actually really busy and I don't have time to uh, just let my turn meter go down also, so I'm gonna have to just play the game here. Obviously the revive. Just really taking his time here. I mean there's not much he can do, so I don't know what he's what he's playing at. Decrease attack. We got the stun off too, but like because he's with Siffy, I think the what is the pass? Oh, he stole all of that. I think the passive is like he just removes all the debuffs. I, I don't know how that works again. I actually am Syphilis still. All right, dude, come on, man. Come on, do your little move. There you go. That's insane. They're just crazy when they're together. Oh my god, I got sheeped. Jesus. Now Siffy got sheeped. There's just sheep all over the place. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. Um, here. Come on. Goodbye. Dear God, why did he take so much time? I've just met so many live arena trolls and that's part of the reason of why I hate live arena so much. Because I run into these assholes who will take up the entire turn meter even if there's only one thing they can do just for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? It's, it's so, so annoying. And they do it just to make you angry. So make sure if you're doing this, don't get angry. If I ever see you again, Gift, I'm gonna put the best stall team I could think of and just not leave it on auto. And I would have loved to take you into a Hydra fight to show you how my Provoke Uko works in Hydra. As of the recording of this moment, all of my keys are already used. Uko is an awesome addition to your roster if you're looking for a support champion that can control the crowds as well as provide support to your team. Maybe you can just throw in a little bit of uh, uncertainty with his passive. Worth prioritizing to max out to 60 in my opinion. But you know who else is a great support champion if you were lucky enough to pull them? Alatreon. You can see how I built him right here.